This is the Roman Legion, the greatest military force in ancient history and the basis for every professional army since. But just how did the citizens of a small Italian town come to conquer the world? This time on Conquest, how to win with the weapons of Rome. Team, this is gonna be tough. We're gonna put you in Roman armor, give you Roman equipment, and train you to fight with the weapons and tactics of the legionary. But it's not just about combat. It's about getting into the mindset of the Roman soldier. His absolute confidence in victory, his refusal to accept defeat. We're gonna make you invincible. And then, for your final challenge, we're gonna send you into battle against the barbarians. Welcome to the Roman army. In the early days of Rome, army service was compulsory for every Roman citizen who held property. It was reason that these men would fight to defend their property and also fight to gain more of it. The Roman state expanded because its army was incredibly aggressive and disciplined. Each nation they defeated would be offered a chance to join the expanding empire. The Romans were hard to refuse. The alternative was annihilation. Enemy states became allies, and their soldiers became auxiliaries in the Roman army. The Romans copied from their enemies. Weapons, armor, formations, tactics, anything that worked. This is male armor, copied from the Celts and in use throughout the Roman period. You could stab through mail, but it would withstand a cut. The only problem was a really hard blow would break the bone beneath it. So, from the first century AD, the Roman legionary wore this, the Lorica Segmentata. This was made of curved iron plates and it gave absolutely brilliant protection to the body and to the shoulders. The helmets were of many styles, but the same basic design, with this strengthening piece across the forehead, with these extra eyebrows here. Sometimes crossbars reinforced the whole skull. These cheek pieces protected the face, and the whole helmet gave you excellent vision, and these ear slots allowed you to hear. It was vital to be able to hear commands in the Roman army. Turn to face me. There's also this very large neck guard. If I cut down at your head, your natural instinct is to turn away and hunch up. And as you do that, that neck guard comes down, slides over the shoulder to protect your neck and shoulders. The Roman legionary was a valuable investment. You were worth protecting. Team, get into your armor. Around 100 BC, the Roman general Marius reorganized the legion. First, he opened it to all Roman citizens, whether they held property or not. They would be a permanent standing army of paid soldiers. Many new recruits couldn't afford their own armor and weapons, and these had to be supplied by the state. So for the first time, military equipment became standardized. Weapons. First, the shield, the scutum. This was made like plywood, strips of wood glued together, made into shape, covered with linen and leather, with a boss and edging of bronze or iron. Now this was shaped to curve around the body. It's over half an inch thick, and until you get used to it, it's heavy. Next, the pilum. This is the javelin, the Roman throwing spear. You'll have two of these, one light and one heavy. Around your waist, you're wearing a kingulum. Here, around the parts that you might wish to use after the battle. Also on the belt is this, the Roman pugio, a stabbing dagger. This will punch its way through just about anything. On a baldric from the shoulder hangs your sword. Now this is on the right hip, so that you can draw it without it getting caught up in your shield. This is the Gladius Hispaniensis. It's a sword copied from the Celts of Spain. This was the sword which won an empire. Legionaries, take up your helmets, your shields, and your javelins. There is a problem with every well-equipped army. It's followed by a baggage train, which moves very slowly and needs lots of protection. The Roman general Marius reduced it in size. Now each squad of eight men was allowed one mule to carry a tent, millstones, and extra supplies. Everything else was to be carried by the legionary. Are you ready to go? Yeah! No, you're not. Every legionary needs one of these. A pole with a cross piece. On this you will have a cloak, a bedroll, mess tins, water bottle, between three and 15 days of supplies, and any personal kit, such as a writing tablet and 
toilet paper. In addition, each of you will carry at least one of the following. A wicker basket, a bucket, a chain, an adze, a hatchet, and stakes. Also, a shovel, an entrenching tool, a turf cutter, and this, a delabra, the Roman pickaxe, because the Roman soldier was also a builder. The average Roman soldier was short, strong, and extremely fit. They had to be. Every night on campaign, the legion would spend up to two hours building a fortified camp, digging a ditch and a parapet, and putting their stakes on top of it to form a palisade. They slept well and safely, and the next day, if things went badly, they had a camp ready to come back to. The soldiers worked in full armor, while others protected them. If they were attacked, they were ready to defend themselves immediately. The Legion had to be able to march 24 miles in five hours, and believe me, that is fast. So in your first hour, you lot should easily be able to cover 50 lengths of this field, which is just under five miles. We gotta march? No way. When do we get to use the weapons? This soldier has just disobeyed an order. The Roman army is held together by discipline. So you lot will all march with full weapons, but you will march with full kit. <laughs> Romans were usually outnumbered, but they had excellent communications and a superb road system. It was vital to get the legions rapidly to wherever the trouble was. And these guys could march faster than any other foot soldier. Even in peacetime, a legionary had to route march three times a month in full kit, which weighed between 80 and 100 pounds. The legionaries called themselves after the name of the general who thought up this brilliant idea, Marius's mules. Team, halt! Fall out. Pathetic. How's the morale? Oh, it's great. But so it should be. This is an army of professional long service soldiers, well paid, fully equipped, excellent health and welfare benefits, and a good pension after 25 years of service, although, of course, you weren't allowed to marry. Ah, oh, you're kidding. Well, you've got other things to think about. You're about to meet your new centurion. Centurions were the drill sergeants of their day. They ran the Roman army with extreme discipline and were often more feared than the enemy. Perete star, star. Ad gladium, cleaner. One particularly nasty fellow was nicknamed Give Me Another for his practice of breaking his staff over his soldiers' backs. Gentlemen, this is the 6th Legion of Victrix, and here is Dave Michaels, also known as Flavius Crispus, your new centurion. Flavius, these men are tired and they are hungry, so perhaps just an hour of drill before lunch? With this sorry-looking lot, at least an hour. All right, Dave, move away! Move away! See you. The Legion was made up of about 4,800 fighting men plus about a 1,000 support staff. It was divided into 10 cohorts. The first cohort was extra large, while the other nine were each made up of six centuries. The century was the basic tactical unit and contained about 80 men under a centurion. Each unit broke down further into teams of eight men who shared a tent. Discipline in the Roman army was swift and brutal. Any regiment that showed cowardice in battle faced decimation. Today, we take that word to mean an overwhelming destruction of an army's ranks, but to the Romans who invented it, it meant killing one out of every ten soldiers in a regiment that required discipline. The most famous act of decimation took place during the slave uprising of 73 BC, led by the gladiator Spartacus. Two legions who lost to Spartacus in battle were duly decimated by their commanders. So there was ample incentive for soldiers to train hard and perform well in battle. On the battlefield, units had to move around each other and support each other with speed and discipline. There was a complex system of commands by various types of trumpet. Some designed to be heard at a great distance over the noise of battle. There were also visual cues. Each century, cohort and the legion itself had a standard which it followed. 
These were considered sacred objects, and the loss of a standard was an unbearable disgrace. Mandata Katate, pick up your shield. Ad Testudanam, Moe. It was essential for every man to learn the battlefield commands and movements. This one is the Testudo, or tortoise, mainly used for siege warfare. Moe. At last, our team is ready for the next stage. They have the equipment, the discipline, and an understanding of drill and tactics. More important, they have the weapons. Next, they learn to use them. Our team has learned the basics of drill and discipline in the Roman Legion. Now it's time to fight. You have to understand the fighting spirit of the Romans. They were entirely aggressive. Even when they were attacked themselves, they moved forward into the attack. They took the fight to the enemy. Now, they had big shields. These weren't to hide behind. These were offensive weapons. Step forward. I'm going to walk through you. Try and stop me. You take my point. And look at the armor. The Romans had the technology to cover the entire body in articulated armor. They chose not to because with the Lorica Segmentata, you could run, and I don't mean backwards. Your first weapon is the Pelum. This is a short-range weapon, very heavy, deadly, brilliantly designed. A rain of these would come down on the front ranks of the enemy, and if he was unarmored, he'd be dead. If he had just a weak shield, this point would break through it, and the metal shaft would continue through and pin the man behind it. If he had a heavy shield, well, this point would stick in the wood, and this shaft was designed to bend on impact, making the shield completely useless. This wasn't a defensive weapon to hold an enemy off. It was a vicious, aggressive tool for killing. The pilum was just to soften them up. The Roman Legion was a machine with 5,000 blades and the gladius was the blade. It's unusual to be able to hold a weapon in your hand and know that this changed the world. And it's so simple. Why this weapon when the Romans had so many other choices? I'll show you. With a long sword, you need lots of room to be able to wield it effectively, which is hopeless for formation fighting. You could use a shield with it, but the shield had to be small and held in one hand. And most importantly, wielding this can be very, very tiring. Now, there is an alternative, the falcata. Now, this was used by the Greeks and the Spanish Celts. It's extremely heavy and very effective. Step forward. But in close combat, you had only one real stroke with this, the downward chop. And every time you raise it to make your attack, he'd stab you. Now, the gladius. Step forward. The Romans knew how to cut with this weapon to clear an opponent's blade or to attack the head, the shoulders or the arm. But they also knew this was a complete waste of time. This weapon is designed for thrusting. Here I am tucked in behind my shield. I can push forwards, but it's very hard to push me back in this position. And my gladius is at the level of his stomach. If I stab forwards, I'll hit him in the guts, in the testicles or the femoral artery at the top of the thigh. There's just a chance that he may parry my incoming thrust. Then I stab upwards to the throat, the face or the eyes. It's almost impossible to avoid at this range because the crucial thing about this attack is speed. You use your arm like a piston. Stab, 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 stab! It's completely simple, absolutely brutal, and you will practice it repeatedly. Romans trained for six months before being accepted into the Legion. They had to be able to read and write to understand written orders. Aside from learning the commands, formations, drill and marching, they spent hours on weapon technique. Throwing the pilum and using wooden swords of double the standard weight to build up their strength. They practiced against each other and against a pella, a thick wooden pole as high as a man. In close order combat, each man is given three feet of space. You are not bunched up, your shields are not overlapping. You have to give the gladius room to do its work. The weapon is short, aggressive, you have to get in close. Let's see the machine in action. Ready, advance. You can see why some have described the advancing Roman legion as a mini-toothed barracuda. You have to know what weapons you're up against and how to defeat them. Over there is a group of warriors. 
behind a wall of shields and spears. Now, first thing is, you're going to do serious damage with your pilum. They're closely packed together, and they cannot raise their shields above their heads. That's your first weapon. When you make contact, this is what you do. Step forward, step forward. I want you to fix those spears with your shields. Move in. I'm in the rank behind you, and I'm going to force my way between you, push my way through, hack and chop at these spears until they get close enough. These guys don't stand a chance. Here are two heavy weapons used against the Legion, the Falx and the Axe. Either of these can carve straight through your helmet. But if you just sit back and defend yourself, I will hack you to pieces. What you have to do with this is attack. So as I come in, you have to attack with your shield held high. Do it! Good! Because I have to use two hands, I'm a good target. The long sword is more difficult. I have a longer reach than you, so you have to keep driving me back. Push me on my back foot. Do it! Don't let me have room to use this thing! That's it! Keep advancing! That's right! And remember, you can stab me three times for every cut I can give you. To help meet the many types of enemy they had to face, the Romans used large numbers of auxiliary forces. These would be light infantry, cavalry, archers. These soldiers were paid less than the legionary, but after 25 years' service, they and their families could become Roman citizens, entitled to all the privileges and protections that went along with that. The auxiliaries were good soldiers, but the battles were won by the heavy infantry foot soldier of the legion. It's time to try some of the techniques we've learnt with a full-scale attack. In two disciplined ranks, our team charges forward. After only a small amount of training, the effect is already obvious. The enemy front line would be devastated by a hail of Pila just seconds before the Romans smashed into them and cut them to pieces with the sword. As the enemy were bunched up, the Roman rear ranks would throw their Pila over their own front ranks into the densely packed mass. It was a mincing machine, and all it takes to start a rout is for one man to break and run, and it won't be a Roman. I feel great, I feel pumped, I feel like I could tear into a real army, not just hay bales now. Lots of uh, speed, shock and violence, we just, we just tore right through them. But what would it be like against a real enemy? At last, our own legionaries are ready to face the final test, the Barbarians. For their final challenge, our team is faced with a group of Barbarians forming a shield wall against them. Both sides are using real weapons but a well-thrown pilum could kill with ease. So we have substituted bales of hay for our frontline barbarians. Gentlemen, your hour has come. There is your enemy. You will charge the hay bales, throw your pila. You will then go through the hay bales and make contact with the barbarian force beyond. Are you ready? <laughs> Attack! team throw their peeler with devastating accuracy. They cut through the hay bales and reform to face the enemy. The barbarians charge towards them. The shields smash together. And our team starts pushing, jabbing and thrusting. Although outnumbered, they break through the shield wall. Once they're on the run, the barbarians are easy targets. Our team has the discipline not to chase too far and to maintain formation. Bodies litter the ground, including some of ours. Well, you took a few casualties. Do you think you did well? Yeah! Not well enough! There's another barbarian force at the top of the hill, including archers! Marching orders! Fast, come on! The barbarian archers are guarding a fortification. To succeed, our team must breach the wall and eliminate the enemy force. Our team marches to meet the barbarians, who let fly with a volley of arrows. The team forms a testudo under a hail of arrows and marches slowly forward. The archers keep firing. Like an armoured tank, the Testudo advances unscathed towards the enemy line. Suddenly, our team changes formation. They begin the attack with swords and shields. 
this time things are not so easy. Our team is exhausted. The Barbarians fight as individual warriors, while our team back each other up and work together. Although the Barbarians fight viciously, they are no match for our superior Roman weapon strategy and training. At last, our team mounts the fortification and can now rain blows down on the defenders. The wall is breached. The Barbarians cut and run to the relative safety of the forest, perhaps to fight another day. Well done, you look exhausted. Yes. But you gained the victory, and for the Romans, that's all that mattered. Our team has shown that on the right terrain, confident, well-trained, disciplined, the Roman Legion was the finest fighting force in the world. We have learnt how to win with the weapons of Rome.